I came into this office, um, worked to ensure that all of the rules were followed and that the information that needs to be retained is retained and, uh, and put training in place so that staff would understand what the rules and regulations are. That, of course, was Ontario's Premier Kathleen Wynne trying to explain herself back in June uh, regarding uh, some developments on the gas plant scandal. Well, we have some updates. They have now agreed the Liberal Party of Ontario to pay the $10,000 that apparently taxpayers handed over to this private individual, a boyfriend of a deputy chief of staff, to come in and wipe their computers. Why did they do this? Well, according to Kathleen Wynne, she says the payment of these funds is in no way intended as a prejudgment or comment upon the findings of the ongoing police investigation. It is to ensure no tax dollars were expended for the work performed. That was her office just yesterday. Joining me to talk about this is the NDP House Leader and PP for Timmins James Bay. It's Jill Bazan. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks so much for joining me. So tell, let's go back to the very beginning, Jill, and talk and remind our viewers what this is all about. We're, what this development is, why is there a police investigation, how did this all come about? Well, the Justice Committee at the time when we were looking into the gas plant scandal knew that the Premier's office and probably the, uh, the office of the uh, government health leader hadn't been involved in discussions about how to deal with the politics of it. And we were trying to get that information, and they kept on coming back and saying, no, no information exists, no information exists. Uh, people even tried by way of freedom of information. They said, no, nothing exists. Well, it doesn't exist. Why? Because they hired Peter Feist, who was the boyfriend of the deputy chief of staff of Gulf and McGinty at the time, used Liberal caucus dollars, in other words, money that the taxpayers put forward, to hire him to go and delete all of the information that was in the Premier's office uh, in regards to this, the, to this particular issue. So what we now got is that the government used government money in order to be able to delete data that they had no right to delete in the first place because it was against the law. And now that they get caught, they say, well, don't, no problem. We'll just pay the money back and everything's fine. Well, it doesn't work like that in real life. Yeah, I mean, it, this is a picture of Laura Miller and her boyfriend, Peter Feist, there, which is off of um, Facebook. He, Peter Feist is the one that came in and did this IT work and wiped out all the data on 20 hard drives inside of the Premier's office before Kathleen Wynne took over, trying to erase, basically, allegedly, um, any information relating to decisions regarding the cancellation of those two gas plants, which the Auditor General has said cost taxpayers $1.1 billion. And what does the Ontario Liberal Premier's office do? Oh, well, we'll pay back ten grand. I actually found this to be a bit insulting. And, uh, of course, arrogance, which is something that we're seeing repeatedly from Kathleen Wynne now that she's a majority leader. Yeah, and, and, you know, in real life, imagine, if you will, that you were part of a trial where you're being accused of something. Uh, let's say that you were involved in some kind of a fraud you're before the court, and all of a sudden evidence comes forward that shows, in fact, you were part of the fraud. And your result, your, your defense is, oh, don't worry, I'll pay the money back, it'll all go away. Well, I'm sorry, they would still charge you. The full length of the law or the full force of the law would still be applied. But what we've got with Kathleen Wynne is a law, a law that applies to the Liberal government uh, where they change rules and one that applies differently to the rest of the citizens. And that's why people are seeing this as arrogant. This is a government, quite frankly, that has been pretty arrogant in its dealings with this. They fail to admit that they've done anything wrong. And when they do get caught and they're found wrong, they say, well, not a problem. We'll just pay the money back. Well, that's an admission of guilt in my books. Yeah, exactly. They got their hand caught in the cookie jar. Now, um, Jill... Big cookie when, jar. Big cookie <laughs> jar. It's, it's courtesy of the taxpayer of Ontario. Mm -hmm. Now, when the legislature resumes next year, I'm assuming it will resume, are you going to be pushing for the continuation of committee hearings and perhaps ask uh, Mr. F Peter Face to come in and provide testimony? I think there's going to be a whole bunch of things that are going to have to happen because what we now know is that the Justice Committee requested documents to which the Premier's office said none exist. You can't do that. That's against the law. Yeah. That's like the judge coming to you in the court and saying, uh, we hear there's evidence in your backyard. Uh, they go and take a look at it and they find out that the, you've, hidden, you've hidden the evidence. So you just can't do that. Plus, there's a whole issue is that we need to hear from Miller and Feist. Who ordered them to do this? Somebody mm -hmm. at the very top of the Liberal Party or somebody at the very top of the Premier's office ordered them to delete all of this data. Who was it? 
I can't believe that they were rogue. There had to be somebody highly placed within the uh, Premier's office or the Liberal Party or both who made them do this. Uh, they certainly didn't do it on their own, and we need to know who. Who was the person who gave the order? Yeah, and who knew about it? Uh, you don't just quietly go into the Premier's office and wipe out government data on that 20 different happens. computers. That never happens. Listen, there's OPP sitting outside the door. This is the thing that's mm -hmm. so galling about this. You can't just walk into the Premier's office and delete information on hard drives and delete data unless they were complicit in some way in allowing it to happen. The OPP is sitting on the, well, not the OPP, the Legislative Precinct Police are mm -hmm. sitting on the outside. The OPP detachment that is a, uh, that are bodyguards to the Premier or normally some somewhere around. So you just can't waltz into that office and do it. And to have it to happen means to say they were complicit. And we need to know who made the order, who said this, let's delete all the evidence uh, that the committee was requesting. We just have a few seconds left, Jill, and I want to ask you, have you had any updates from the ongoing police investigation? Of course, it's the OPP investigating these, uh, the, this breach. It, do we expect to see charges anytime soon, maybe in early 2015? I think there's a strong possibility because the law is that you're not allowed to delete information. You cannot delete data, especially if it's part of a trial or part of a committee proceeding. So something's going to come out of this, if not through the OPP, uh, through the Legislative Committee itself. And at one point, I think what's important for the public to know, nobody's above the law. Kathleen Wynne can't just write the law and make the rules to sue her uh, in order to benefit her and her liberal friends. Somebody's got to pay for this. Somebody's got to be held responsible. Well, I thank you so much for keeping this in the public eye, and I wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I will see you, I'm sure, in 2015. We'll continue talking about this, making sure Ontarians remember what the gas plant scandal was. We're going to take a quick...